today's video we're going to be working on an AC this is going to be the ambient temperature outside you can see here that the thermostat is set to cool and auto the ambient right now in the unit is 89 degrees you want to make sure you have your set point dropped below the ambient and we do have it set to 76 once you ensure that your thermostat is calling for cool the next thing you want to do is you want to go to your air handler you want to see if your blower motor is running they are removed the filter you see the filter is very dirty and right now we're going to inspect the blower motor just to ensure that it is running so here we are at the condensing unit First thing you want to do is you want to check the incoming voltage. We're going to remove our exterior panel to our condenser and we're going to check for voltage coming in to the contactor. Just a reminder, working on any type of voltage can cause serious bodily damage and even could be life threatening. So you want to make sure that you use the proper equipment, that you're properly trained when you're working on any type of electrical work. Right now I have my multimeter set to volts AC. I'm going to check the incoming voltage from my disconnect to my contactor. The voltage from the disconnect is at the circuit breaker. So right now we're gonna check our incoming voltage. You have 120 on each side. You're going to take your multimeter and you're going to put each of your leads on each side of the contactor and you should be getting 240 volts. So right now I do know that I am getting 240 volts from my disconnect. If for some reason you're not getting 240 volts, you can look for one of two issues. Some disconnects have these little fuses and if the fuse goes bad, that will stop the 240 volts from going to your contactor. You can always do a continuity test, set your multimeter to continuity and then go ahead and touch each side of your fuse. So right now, my multimeter is making a beeping noise that tells me that I do have a good fuse and you can see here that it is zeroing out. Make sure you test both fuses. If both fuses are good, then we'll move to the next step. If one or two fuses are bad, you'll have to replace the fuses. The next thing you want to do is you want to come to the circuit breaker and you want to see which breaker controls the voltage coming into the disconnect. This is the breaker right here. Generally, if there's an issue with voltage coming in, the breaker will either be off or it'll be in the trip position. Go ahead and reapply the voltage to your disconnect by turning on or resetting your breaker. Once you reset the breaker, you should have 240 volts. At this point, I do have voltage coming in. I don't have any issues with my disconnect or my fuses. So now we're gonna move to the next step. I've already checked the incoming voltage. I do have 240 volts. The next step is gonna be testing for low voltage. Again, be very careful when you're working on your system. So we do know that we have 240 volts coming into the contactor. I am going to remove power by pulling my disconnect. I'm gonna check the incoming voltage and you can see I do not have 240 volts. Now I'm testing for low voltage. You see here I have two wires coming in and then they branch off. One is gonna to go to each side of this contactor. And you can see that I do have 26 volts. Now here, I've inspected the contactor and I can see the issue right here is gonna be my plunger. You can see that it is very damaged. And this is gonna be the issue that we're having. Even though I'm getting 240 volts coming in, and I have my 24 volts on the side, my plunger is not allowing 
my power that's coming in to go to the compressor. Now even though my plunger is engaging because I have 24 volts, we're going to set our multimeter to continuity. We have a used contactor and you can see right now I don't have any continuity. Now I'm manually engaging my contactor using my insulated screwdriver on the plunger and you can see that I do have continuity. So here my contactor is engaged but even when I put my multimeter to test for continuity I'm not getting continuity. So right now we know the issue is going to be a faulty contactor. Now the reason I prefer doing the continuity test is because a lot of times the plunger, it may still be intact. And so visually you can't see any issues with the plunger. So right now, if I was to look at a contactor that looks like this, I would still perform a continuity test. Now I'm going to put my disconnect back in. My multimeter set to volts AC. This is my incoming voltage, 240 volts. Check my low voltage, I do have 24 volts. And right now I'm going to check for voltage going back out to the compressor. And you can see here that my multimeter is reading zero volts. Now we're going to test each leg. I have my multimeter set to volt AC. I have one of my leads on the ground and one going to the left side of my contactor. And you can see here that I have 120 volts. The same test. One of my leads is to ground. One is going to my other side of my of my contactor. And you can see that I have 120 volts. One piece of advice that I do want to give to you viewers, especially those who are new to the industry. Generally on some of my videos, when I have a contactor, if I'm having an issue with the thermostat, what I'll do is I'll come outside, I'll pull the panel, I'll press the contactor, and just use my fingers and engage the contactor. And what happens is, once I engage the contactor, if the entire condenser comes on, if my fan motor comes on if my compressor comes on then I know that the issue is going to be indoors. One viewer did point out to me the caution of using my fingers because even though we are outside we have 240 volts coming in and my unit's not running you still have 120 volts on each side and if you're not paying attention and you use your finger and you engage the contactor and the plunger is broken you allow yourself to be exposed to electricity. So one of the things that I did start doing in troubleshooting my system is I did go ahead and purchase a insulated screwdriver. Now this allows me to go ahead and engage the contactor but also to be a safe distance at the same time. You can see here I use my screwdriver and look, the plunger right there, the lead is pretty much broken off. And I do want to say if you are working on electrical, make sure you get yourself the proper tools and just be safe when you're working on your system. At this point, we know the contactor needs to be replaced. We have incoming voltage. We did our continuity tests. We're not getting continuity. We're not getting 240 volts going back to the compressor. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove our contactor and we're going to replace it with a new one. Here we have our new contactor that we're going to be installing. If you look here, you can see even on the new contactors, they have this little protective case to protect the plunger. This is going to protect from any insects or bugs that go behind the plunger. A lot of times when you're working on your unit, you'll find that spiders will climb inside behind the plunger and then they'll end up getting fried. And what happens is every time the plunger engages, um, there's, it's not making proper contact. So if you do have a contactor with the protective case, make sure you reapply that. Here you can see this contactor is basically the same contactor. The difference is the one that's there, 
This is going to be a single pole. It only has one plunger. Whereas the new one that I purchased is a double pole and it has two plungers. Now for me, I prefer the double pole simply because of the construction of these contactors. They're much more heavier. The difference on a side-by-side -side comparison, this one is just a little more dense, uh, much more protected. Whereas on this one, you can see it's just more exposed to the elements. And now in regards to wiring your contactor, I know a lot of times there are some guys who like take a picture of the wiring, but I do want to caution against that. Look, I've used it many times, so I'm not saying it's, it's, it's a tool, but as far as training, you wanna train yourself to read schematics and diagrams to allow you to wire it properly the way it is shown on the schematics here on the side of the panel. Here, if you look at the schematics, this is gonna be our contactor. We have L1, L2, T1, and T2. And then they kind of have an arrow here where it kind of gives you a bigger, more in-depth view. So you can see here, your L1 and your L2, that's gonna be your incoming voltage, 120 volts on each side. And then we have here our ground. Obviously here, this is gonna be your low voltage, your 24 volts. And you can see this is gonna go onto our terminals on the side of the contactor. Now if we look at the top right side, that's gonna be T2. We're going to follow our wires that tie into T2 on the contactor. Here we see we have our compressor fan and our capacitor. Look here, you have C, that's your common, F, that's your fan, and this is your ERM terminal on your capacitor. Just off the schematics, we have our common, and we'll have a wire coming from our common to T2 on our contactor. Wire is going to come from our compressor. See here, it's gonna be coming from the R on our compressor and we can trace that going all the way up and that also ties into T2 on the contactor. Now we're going to trace the next wire coming off of our contactor and that's T1. Trace the wire, that's gonna come from our fan motor. The other wire is gonna come from our compressor. You can see this is our com right here. This is C terminal from the compressor going up. And that's gonna tie into the T1 terminal on our contactor. Again, before starting on the wiring to your contactor, Make sure that you remove power by removing the disconnect or turning off the disconnect, turning off the breaker, and then you want to go ahead and you want to test the incoming voltage at your contactor. You can see I do not have voltage. Right now, we're looking at the schematics. This is gonna be T2, and we have one wire coming off of our capacitor from the common terminal. You can see that's our capacitor. The middle is going to be our C terminal. And you see that it does jumper off to the right side of my contactor, which is going to be T2. I remove that wire. Next wire, you can see it's a thicker gauge wire. And this is gonna be coming from my compressor. Here we have two more wires. The thicker one is coming from my compressor. The smaller black wire, that's gonna be for my fan motor. We're gonna remove our low voltage wires. We're gonna loosen our screws for our L1 and L2 terminal, and that's gonna be our incoming voltage. Again, just as I said, for safety and training, 
You see I am using an insulated screwdriver. And now we're going to remove our screws that secure to the case of the condenser and then we'll remove our contactor. This is kind of a close up view. You can see there that the plunger was destroyed. If you look at this, this is a, just a used one. You can see right there is a spring. And as the plunger engages, the spring makes contact. Here the wiring is going to be pretty easy. Again, we already went through the schematics. We have our incoming voltage here at the bottom. We have our low voltage wires on the sides. And then we have four wires. We have two that go into T1 and two that go into T2. And basically, I know my two red ones, that's gonna go into my T2 terminal. And my two black wires are gonna go into my T1 terminal. Right now we're just gonna loosen our set screws. And this is gonna allow us to secure our incoming voltage from our disconnect. So here I put my wires in. Just make sure that when you tighten your set screw, that you make it nice and tight. Now we've resecured our new contactor to the case of our condenser. Make sure it's nice and tight. I like to kind of pull on it, make sure we don't have any play. Now we're going to reassemble our wires. This is the wire coming from our common on our run capacitor the thicker wire is going to be coming from our compressor we have two more wires the thinner one is going to be from our fan motor and one thing I want to mention as we're doing this make sure when you're putting your wires in that they're nice and tight if it comes out easily when you pull it you want to go ahead and tighten the pins the thicker wire right here, that's going to be from our compressor. At this point, we just have our low voltage wires. The thermostat is on, so as soon as I connect my second wire, my plunger is going to engage. Now we're going to reconnect our low voltage wire. Make sure you secure your capacitor, it's nice and tight as well. Now we're ready to test our system. We're going to go ahead and we're going to push our disconnect back in. We did test our fuses, our fuses are working and our system should turn on. My thermostat right now is set to auto, cool and I did drop the ambient temperature at the beginning of the video. I have my multimeter set to volt AC. I have incoming voltage from my disconnect, 240 volts. And now I should have 240 volts right here up top. Right now this is the ambient temperature inside the unit. You can see I'm taking a reading from my vent. Right now we're at 72 degrees. It's going to continue to drop.
make sure when you finish your work that you do re-secure the side of the panel for your condenser as well as the cover for your disconnect. If this video was a help, if it was informational, please subscribe.